picture of fantasy. Um, we have members from all over the United States. Um, we outgrew every single house. We started with a small group and eventually moved to hotels, and now we're in the Coliseum. Artwork on display at the convention is as wild and diverse as the people in attendance. Certain subjects, however, are perennial favorites, says art room director Frank Schiavo. Usually the most popular works are dragons and unicorns, pretty girls, because the pretty girls are always selling it. and something with a laser pistol in it, or a space art, usually. A lot of people are very interested in space art. Ever since Coastcon started about 14 years ago, we've had an art show and art show. On the past eight to nine different panels, or rather different questionnaires we've done with our general membership, we usually, the art show is usually listed either second or third amongst the thing that is most wanted to see. People really come by to enjoy. I've had to, for example, I usually am open, I'm open later hours than most anything else at the show because people really like to see the audience. We're going to take six. We're going to six on Jeff's daughter. Six on Jeff's daughter. Go to the other side. Let's go to the other side. Six on Jeff's daughter. That's six point one. Oh, seven dollars. Seven dollars on Jeff's daughter. Eight. Got eight dollars on Jeff's daughter. Eight. Eight point one. Eight point five. Oh, big 10, big 10 in the back, on Joker's daughter. Big 10 in the back, on Joker's daughter. 10 going once, 10 going twice. 10, third time, time, so. I have a dealer's room, sometimes commonly called the Huckster's room, which is cool similar to a science fiction and fantasy flea market. Retailers from all over the United States purchase table space to sell their wares. You can buy leather work, jewelry, books, hats, posters, dragon statues, practically anything in science fiction and fantasy that you would like to have if you're a collector. <laughs> My name is Jack Stocker. Under normal circumstances, I'm a professor of chemistry at the University of New Orleans. But about twice, maybe three times a year when there's a science fiction convention in this general region, I take myself off to the convention. Occasionally, I take one or more dealer's tables to get rid of the slush pile of books I've accumulated from garage sales and symphony book sales. And simply using that as an excuse to go to these sales, I come and have a dealer's table and get to talk to everybody at the convention, which I enjoy very much. The tennis, I'm told, is pushing for... Hi, Mom. Get in here. Get in here. Hey, uh, my story, man, I haven't been done for me. Good film, what? We also have panels um, that are continuous from early morning to late in the evening where our guests and authors and artists uh, who are famous in the field will discuss writing for Dragon Con, how to write with the South as a locale, how to develop a world for a science fiction novel, how to market your book. Yeah, I do horror novels, uh, usually with a southern setting. Uh, I'm from Louisiana, and so I usually use a lot of the swamp setting and a lot of uh, southern characters. And Blood Hunter is about a Louisiana legend uh, about the Mormo, who were sort of like Bigfoot, but I kind of took that and played with it and twisted it into a sort of werewolf type story. And I have a lot of fun at conventions. You get to lot, meet a lot of people. That, uh, you get to meet other writers, which is a lot of fun. And you, you find out that you're sharing a lot of the same experiences, a lot of the same goals, a lot of the same headaches and problems. It all kind of works together. And uh, I'm doing some comic book work, which uh, got underway because I met Roland Mann last year at CoastCon. We decided to do some hard comic books together. Yeah, this is our third year to have a table here. Uh, it's, it's done real well for us because this is in a spot where a lot of people walk by and some, some folks who aren't even into comics will stop by and say, what is this, what are you doing? And it, it, 
takes a lot of interest when they find out that we're local guys. Uh, it's like, oh wow, you, you, you live in, in Hattiesburg and you do this? I, I never knew anyone in Mississippi did this. And Mississippi isn't the only unlikely place to find a comic book company. The small town of Rockland, Maine is home to Christopher Mills and his comic cohorts at Alpha Productions. Well, we wound up down here because, well, first we were invited. Uh, some of the people on the committee skipped, saw our work and uh, invited us. You know, it's like, you know, we jumped at the opportunity because we want to spread, you know, spread the word about our books, let people know everywhere, you know, what we're doing, try to generate interest in it, and uh, besides, we've never been here before, we thought it'd be fun. Among the many displays at CoastCon was an extensive collection of Star Trek memorabilia. Collector Sally Jerome of Gaucher has found some amazing items, including an album of songs by Mr. Spock himself. Highly illogical. But the Coliseum's David Mott explains the most unusual display was unexpected. The way this started as far as we're concerned is uh, we found out on Wednesday at noon uh, there was a truck here on the premises with a uh, baby brontosaurus in it. Uh, Bill Holmes, the director of the Coliseum, went out and looked at it, and he said, no, no, you've got the wrong place. Uh, Dynamation, an animated dinosaur show that this is part of, is opening in April at the mall. So Bill said, no, take it back over to the mall. If you see David, give it to him, and, and uh, if not, bring it back here and drop it off. Well, David called, and we said one of your dinosaurs was here, and that was the last of the scene. Well, tonight, around 8.15, four men in raincoats with pantyhose on their head rolled it in out of the rain and took off and disappeared. Uh, it fits in real well with Postcon's theme, the theme this year is Year of the Dragon, so it seems to be getting along with everyone, so we're going to let it stay. As well as the dinosaur fit in, its presence was overshadowed by the wild events occurring in the main ballroom, the popular Postcon costume contest and dance. <laughs> I just want to remind you to stick around after the contest proceedings are over because Robert Nagel will be doing his thing out to, here on the dance floor. It's a lot of hard work, but you do it for the love of it, and um, Postcon is one of the longest running conventions that is continuous in this genre, and we'd like to see it continue to grow.